We have Adam Conover from True TV's uh, Adam Ruins Everything. Adam uh, joined College Humor in 2012 as a staff writer and a cast member of College Humor Originals. He's also the creator and star of the new True TV series, Adam Ruins Everything, which is based on a College Humor original series of the same name. In addition to writing College Humor originals, such as Mitt Romney style, he has appeared in videos for the site's Hardly Working series. Prior to joining College Humor, he was an instructor and performer at the Upright Citizens Brigade uh, Theater in New York City. He's a stand-up comedian who performs nightly around LA, and he hosts his weekly comedy show, Fresh Out at UCB Sunset. Please welcome Adam Conover. Oh my God. Hello, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you for having me. Hello everybody, hi there. How's it going? Hi, are, are you guys enjoying the conference so far? Are you having a good time? Good, all right, I'm, sorry, I'm trying to do this like a comedy show because that's what I know how to do. Start by dropping my water every time. Um, yeah, my name is Adam Conover. I host uh, the show Adam Ruins Everything. Um, why am I here speaking at uh, this event? I'm not entirely sure. Uh, I am a comedian. Uh, if you watching this are getting the sense that, wait a second, we, this guy's talking about marketing and generations and millennials and he doesn't know what he's talking about. This is just some dumb comedian's uh, take on the issue. That's exactly what it is, but um, that's exactly what I'm gonna present to you, but that's what they asked me to give. Um, and uh, what I was told was that my show is very popular with millennials and it was based on a web series that was also very popular with millennials and maybe I have some insight on how to appeal to millennials and I do but it's not what you might expect um, because my show is uh, if you haven't seen it what it is, it's an, it's an educational comedy show in which I dispel common misconceptions about the world in which we live. I uh, puncture your uh, widely held beliefs that you would rather not have, have disrupted. We talk about issues like uh, that engagement rings are a marketing scam. Uh, it's true, they were invented by the De Beers Diamond Corporation in the 30s as a way to sell more diamonds. Diamonds are also virtually worthless, uh, as we talk about in that video. Uh, the TSA does nothing to prevent terrorist attacks. Um, uh, it does, it, we're taking our shoes off for no reason. It creates the illusion of security without actually making us more secure. And the hymen doesn't work anything the way you think it does. Um, <laughs> guys in the audience, and also many women, um, don't no, our cultural idea of the hymen is totally at odds with uh, the reality. You can watch this. I won't get into the details. It gets a little biological, but um, uh, you can watch the episode later. Uh, so, uh, and we back up all of the jokes I make on the show with research, and, and you know, we have a research team that does it for us. Um, but so this is the, these, these are the sort of topics that we do, right? So it wouldn't be uh, very on brand of me. Um, did I use that right? Okay, good, uh, marketing people. If I didn't disrupt uh, this conference um, by telling you the following, uh, millennials don't exist. Uh, that's right, this is Adam Ruins Millennials. That's the segment that we're doing today. Um, now I'm being a little bit glib when I say that, right? Um, I don't mean that literally uh, 20 year olds don't exist because if they didn't, then who would make our coffee at Starbucks? Babies, I don't know. Um, those are the only people who would accept those wages, I think, other than 20 year olds. Uh, but uh, what I mean more specifically is that this image of a millennial, right? This is the current cultural image of the millennial that we see in the media, right? The lazy, entitled narcissist who lives with her parents, takes photos of herself on, the, on her phone, right? This person does not exist. Um, I mean, this literal woman exists, right? But she's modeling for Time Magazine. This is a stereotype, right? Uh, this millennial also does not exist, and neither does this one. Um, I know a lot of 20-year-olds, not a lot of them stand in front of hand-drawn graffiti of social media jargon, you know? They're not like, oh man, I love wall. My favorite thing is wall. You know, they use Facebook, but they don't really like it. You know what I mean? They're not like, oh, social, that's my lifestyle, right? That does, that's not real. And so if you uh, try to market to this image, you will end up completely alienating your audience because millennials hate this shit. They hate it. They can't stand it, right? And the fact is that generations in general don't exist. They're not real things that exist in nature. We made them up, okay? Let's look at the chart of the classic millennial breakdown, right? Everyone from 1980 on is a millennial, 60s to 80s, that's Gen X, 40 to 60, that's boomers, 20s to 40s, that's the silent generation. I actually hadn't heard of them before I read this chart. <laughs> I guess they don't talk about themselves that much. And then we have the greatest generation, which, speaking of narcissism, my God, the greatest generation, all right. 
Fine, great, terrific, okay. But so, um, now, the horizontal line going up and down, right, that's based on data, right? That's the number of people who are alive who are born in a particular year right now, you know, that this is the, uh, the, how it breaks down according to birth year, right? So that's based on real data. The vertical lines, though, right, those are just sort of slotted in there, right? Those don't uh, correspond to anything, like, specifically in, uh, demographics, you know what I mean? It's not as though every boomer gave birth to a Gen X or gave birth to a millennial. This is just like an artificial way to divide it up. There are boomers whose kids are also boomers, and there are millennials who have kids who are millennials. Imagine that right now. There are millennials with little baby millennials. Um, it's bizarre. If you look at the demographics, here's what really exists. People. Just a whole... <laughs> This is, this is an actual generational breakdown. We just got a whole lot of people who are alive at the same time. And there's different amounts of varying, varying amounts of them, right? That, that, that's what actually exists. And, and the Census Department themselves say, we do not define generations. The Census Bureau does not define generations, right? So um, uh, now the thing is generations, right? They're a convenient lens through which we look at the people. And the question is, how explanatory, how useful is the particular lens we're using, right? So, and you can, you can do it any way that you want. And the thing is that the, uh, the, the categories that we use tend to reveal our own prejudices and opinions about the people we're describing. And so you, you have to ask yourself is, is the description we're using actually helping us to learn or do anything at all, right? So for instance, we might say people born in the early 20s, that those are the people who grew up in the shadow of the Great Depression, in all that poverty and want, and that probably shaped their lives and the way they look at the world. Correct, right? I, I would agree with that. But equally true about them is that they're also the generation that enjoys jazz clarinet music. Right? It's equally true about them, a lot less useful of a fact, right? Uh, people born in the late 80s, you might say, oh, those are the people who grew up with MTV. That's the MTV generation. They grew up with music videos, fast, ta uh, you know, fast moving media, stuff like that. Also true, you might also say, well, this is the generation that saw Janet Jackson's nickel nipple at the Super Bowl. Also true, less explanatory. Now, I know you're going to say a lot of people saw her nipple. Those are the people who were OK with seeing her nipple. Um, <laughs> They were like, we're happy to see the nipple. It's fine. Why is everyone making such a big deal about it, right? So this is how we divide it up. Like, we, we, can, we can divide up these people however we want. How useful is the divisions that we're using, right? So where do our actual divisions come from? Where do the generations that we talk about, you know, where does the idea of millennial, boomers, where are those big ones? Where, where did those come from? The fact is, writers invent them to get rich. Um, uh, Generation X was coined by Douglas Copeland. He was a novelist in the uh, early 90s. Um, he wrote uh, this book, Generation X. It was a huge bestseller. You can see up in the top there, the book that defined an era. Um, it was very successful for him. He got on the cover of Time magazine. And after that, it was like a gold rush. Who can name the next generation? Who's going to get the name that sticks? And as we all remember, there were like dozens of names tossed out there that are just like, you know, ro rose and fell. There was Echo Boomers. Remember that one? 60 Minutes apparently was pushing Echo boomers um, uh, with a flip phone, I guess, represented <laughs> uh, millennials to them. Um, uh, very, uh, very clearly a show made by uh, old people. Um, <laughs> Right. Echo boomers, I guess, because they were echoing the pre, like the baby boom or something, whatever. Uh, the net generation, okay, that's that's pretty good. The generation that grew up with the internet, maybe we could get some value out of that. There was Generation Y, as in Y wasn't the person who came up with this more creative. Um, <laughs> It was great. Uh, but the winners of the big generational jackpot were these guys, Neil Howe and William Strauss, who coined the term millennials. Um, uh, and uh, yeah, and they, uh, that was the term that stuck, right? Here's them describing on TV. And also, so they coined the term, so they got to pick what they thought differentiated the generation from the ones uh, before it, right? So here's their pitch. Today, with the emergence of yet a new generation, babies are to be protected. And we call them the millennial generation. Okay, yeah, yeah, millennials, babies are protected, right? We protect millennials, right? As opposed to previous generations who were just allowed to like play in open mine shafts <laughs> and with uh, TNT, right? That's why they were called baby boomers, because they were always exploding. That's the best joke in the presentation. Um, 
Yeah, uh, but uh, look, but these guys did it. They, these guys have made a ton of money. Off of, I, I believe they're millionaires because they coined the term millennials. They founded a firm called Life Course Associates, which uses a visionary blend of social science and history to interpret the qualitative nature of a generation's collective persona to help managers and marketers leverage quantitative. They take a lot of money to do a lot of nothing, in my opinion. That's what they do. Um, uh, I sounded like Donald Trump for a second right there. Um, uh, and they consult for huge firms like Best Buy, Merrill Lynch, the N. RA and the Coast Guard, and they're very successful because I know a lot of millennials who are like, oh yeah, Merrill Lynch is totes on fleek, you know? <laughs> the Coast Guard is bae, right? <laughs> Work, worked out great for them. It's fantastic, okay? Here's the fact, generational thinking, talking about generations this way, has always been historically reductive and condescending to the people who are being described. The first person to talk about generations was Hesiod. He was history's first economist. He was an ancient Greek economist. Judging by his expression, the Greek economy wasn't doing so well. <laughs> I guess he was also, this is interesting, the last economist to never host a podcast <laughs> because they hadn't been invented yet. But then right after that, uh, Dubner and Levitt got going. So, um, so he uh, used generations to talk about the history of Greece at the time. And the way he talked about the, uh, the generations below him was a little bit familiar. Um, uh, the on they only care about frivolous things. When I was a boy, we were taught to be discreet and respectful of, of elders, but the present youth are exceedingly impatient of restraint. This, this could have been in that damn Time Magazine article about millennials, I think. Um, uh, this just goes to show that old people have been saying, when I was a boy, since there were boys, right? Uh, like, I'm pretty sure cavemen were going, uh, oh, fire generation, it feels entitled to stick. <laughs> when me was a boy, me had to work for stick, right? It's just, it's just shit old people say about young people, right? It's all it was, same as generations are usually just old people talking about snack about young people. And when we look at the history of talking about generations in this country, it's the same story over and over again. Here's a famous Life Magazine article about the baby boomers from 1968. And the, the writer said, even as I said it, I knew the phrase to make a living could have absolutely no meaning to these children of the affluent society. That's not about millennials, that's about baby boomers, all right? It's not about Mumford and Son fans, it's about hippies, ba Beatles fans, right? Hipsters versus hippie. Can you believe hipsters, hippies? It's the same goddamn word. Um, <laughs> all right, uh, 1985, the video generation, right? This is an article from 1985 worrying that the new generation was becoming self-obsessed because they were filming themselves on their brand new mobile devices, right? Again, it's, does that seem familiar to us at all? Uh, 1990, 20-something, laid back, late blooming, or just lost, complaining that Gen Xers are entitled and don't want to work for a living, all the way up to this Time Magazine piece of shit from 2013. <laughs> I'm sorry, I got a little emotional. I asked if I could swear they said yes, but that's how I feel about it. The me, 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 gender, millennials are lazy, entitled narcissists who still live with their parents, which, by the way, this is clearly a ripoff of the Tom Wolf article from 1976. Like, they're, it's a direct quote of it. Like, it's, it's like such a, a gross retread, right? And the fact is, millennials, by the way, again, they hate this. They were offended by this cover. Um, they uh, did a bunch of remixes of it, which I really liked. Uh, the indentured generation. We trampled their rights, tanked the economy, and trashed the planet for our benefit, but expect them to foot the bill? Why, we call them narcissists. It's got a laughing baby boomer, which I really enjoy. Um, turning the tables. And then this is a lot more uh, internet uh, culture. The meow, meow, meow generation. I just find that amusing. Um, Let's see, what's next? Uh, so these are just, m most of the time, when we're talking about generations, especially in the media, maybe not you smart marketing people who have done all your research and know what you're doing, right? But when the media is talking about generations, they're usually just using insulting stereotypes. Let's look at a little sample. Flip flops at work, Facebook breaks, free yoga on Fridays. Meet the millennials. Hey, millennials, what makes you so special anyway? Millennials are famous for being narcissistic, entitled, uh, lazy, and never looking up because they're on their phone. That's how you can spot one in the wild. And their priorities are simple. They come first. Modern Family's Haley has been accused of being a narcissist. Oh, yeah, Modern Family, right. Who's got a beat on the millennial generation better than cool teen Stephen, uh, Christopher Lloyd and Stephen Levitan? the creators of Modern Family, um, two old guys. Uh, look, here's the fact. The stereotypes you hear about millennials just aren't true. Let's break down some of them. 
Uh, millennials are entitled. Okay, if they're entitled, then why is it that 61% of graduating college seniors held internships and nearly half of those internships were unpaid, right? Can you guys imagine a previous generation that willing to work for free? Like, you think Rosie the Riveter was doing it just because she loved riveting? She was doing it for the cold hard cash, come on. She was getting paid for that, right? Millennials are narcissists. All right, so this one has been promulgated a lot by a um, researcher named uh, Gene Twenge, who's a psychologist um, who uh, claims we've done a lot of research showing that millennials are entitled. Well, we do know from looking at narcissism scores among college students that this generation does score a little higher on narcissism, perhaps because they got so much praise uh, growing up and they got a trophy just for showing up Oh my God, the participation trophies. Is anybody sick of the participation trophy meme? I can't get my like gr grumpy dads and uncles won't shut up about the participation trophies, about oh, kids are being ruined because they're getting uh, cheap plastic figurine for free, forgetting that's exactly what Christmas is. Um, exactly the same thing. Uh, football player uh, James Harrison posted this. This went viral on Instagram. I came home to find out my two boys received two trophies for nothing. Participation trophies. I'm very proud of them for everything they do and will encourage them. These trophies will be given back until they earn a real trophy. Sorry, not sorry. I, I don't know. What's more traumatic for your kids? Being given nice trophies or being publicly shamed on Instagram? I'm not sure. <laughs> Also, just to point out that even if, what is it, the Steelers, even if they lose every game this year, he'll still make a couple million bucks. How's that for a participation trophy? Um, but, uh, right, so if millennials, if this were true, right, if this were a real problem, we would expect millennials as a cohort to do worse at sports, right? The opposite is true. There are eight major league pitchers who pitch over 100 miles per hour right now. 30 years ago, there was only one, like Nolan Ryan could do it, nobody else. Now there's eight. Michael Phelps holds the uh, world record for gold medals. There are 10 millennials on the Forbes richest list, moving away from sports for a second. 10 millennials, which is impressive considering how young they are. The number of chess grandmasters in the world has doubled in the last generation. Classical music pieces, that that were once thought impossible to play are regularly played by young performers. So guess what, you know, if your kid isn't achieving well, maybe that world's best dad trophy is the real participation trophy. <laughs> Maybe, uh, maybe you're the problem here, buddy, right? Okay, now, if millennials are so narcissistic, then why is it that when asked uh, the percent, they rank most important of them, being a good parent, having a successful marriage, helping others in need, owning a home, living a religious life as the things that are most important to them, high, having a high-paying career, having lots of free time, becoming famous are at the bottom of that, right? Um, uh, in fact, study after study has shown we find little reason to conclude that the average member of generation me is dramatically different vis-a-vis -vis narcissism from members of previous generation. This is a big, like, cross, uh, you know, cross-study study, a study of studies, if you will. Um, in fact, it found that uh, narcissism, the real truth about narcissism is that uh, uh, if you look at people as they age, their narcissism is highest when they're a student, goes down when they're a parent, goes down again when they become grandparents, right? That makes intuitive sense to us. Your young people are narcissistic. They become less narcissistic as they age, but they become cranky here about younger people being narcissistic. <laughs> Narcissism is a fact of life. It's a natural part of growing older, right? It's a part of your development. So being angry about the younger generation being narcissistic, that's like saying, oh, this young generation only wants to poop in their diaper. They don't want to use the bathroom, right? Uh, and they're always looking at their mobile devices. <laughs> that's the best joke in the presentation, I think. Uh, okay, so Gene, here's the, Gene, younger generations aren't, aren't narcissistic, you're just old and mad at them. So here's your participation trophy, you old. <laughs> uh, millennials are always on their phones and it's ruining their lives. Oh my God, I'm sick of this too, all right? Now it's true, yes, millennials are on their phones a lot, right? Uh, but you know who else is on their phones? Uh, moms and dads and also some dogs, everyone. Everyone is on their phone, right, all the time, because it's the most revolutionary communication device invented within our lifetimes. A lot of you are on your phones right now, live tweeting that I'm saying you're on your phones. I've been to these conferences. People are on their phones constantly, right? Now, um, uh, the, the thing is that people are always just have, it's the same reaction that people always have to new technology. Douglas Adams, uh, the uh, brilliant science fiction writer, uh, had a, has a wonderful quote on this. I've come up with a set of rules that describes our reactions to technologies. Anything that's in the world when you're born is normal and ordinary and just a natural part of the way the world works. Anything that's invented between when you're 15 and 35 is new and exciting and revolutionary and you can probably get a career in it. Anything invented after you're 35 is against the natural order of things. 
right? So I think we can all agree that that's true, right? I'm 32, we'll see what I hate in three years. I barely got on board with Snapchat, but I'm there now. Um, uh, bicycles, when they were invented in 1912, people were terrified of them. This is a cartoon, the awful effects of velocipeding. The thousands of young men and women joining the host of desecrators betrayed by the allurements of a Sunday wheeling is alarming, wrote the Christian advocate in the 1910s. Uh, movies when they came out. Here's a book writing almost all children who attend movies and almost all children do uh, almost always are exposed to screen experience of life that are far beyond their years and are robbed of some of the preciousness of childhood. Uh, corrosive effect on the youth. And uh, radio when that appeared. Uh, the American Journal of Psychiatry worried that it was a disturbing influence that was locking parents away from their children, right? Um, uh, uh, social media is just more media, all right? It's a little different from some medias in some, you know, some, some particular ways that we can talk about. I'm sure you've talked about them uh, at length today. But it's just more media. Uh, it just happens to be a new one that old people find frightening, right? Um, and so if you treat it like it's a worse form of media or a dumber form of media or like somehow fundamentally at odds or weird, you can make really huge mistakes. For instance, you could be uh, one of those brands that just tweets bay at children. Um, <laughs> This is from the brand saying Bay Twitter account. I don't understand what the philosophy is here that people want to, like, what, be in a healthy, loving relationship with AT&T. I don't understand why AT&T would tweet Bay at so many 14-year-olds. Uh, uh, I think they just want to buy a phone, not, like, make out with AT&T. You know what I mean? <laughs> Uh, or you could uh, sandbag a promising television show by giving it a dated, condescending title. Um, this show didn't do so well because uh, millennials love nothing more than being condescended to by the 45-year-old creator of a television show. Um, uh, or uh, you can uh, use a trending hashtag on Twitter uh, before suddenly realizing that that hashtag was actually about domestic abuse. This was a pretty big social media fail. <laughs> um, Caused by jumping on, uh, I forget what it was about exactly. I'll move on quickly from it. Or, oh, this one, and this one, this is a really big one from this. How does your student loan debt make you feel? Tell us in three emojis or less. Um, uh, God, my God, Hillary. Look, when you tell a whole generation of frustrated emojis to describe uh, how they feel about their money flying away emojis using little cartoon characters. You're not giving them a kissy face emoji. No, you're thumbs downing their intelligence and you're treating them like a pile of poop emoji. Uh, look, young people don't need you to talk to them in their language, right? They want you, they just want to be treated like intelligent people who are worthy of respect, right? It's not rocket science emoji. Am I using emojis right? I don't know. Um, so, okay, so what are the facts? What can we actually say about millennials? Well, uh, going back to this image, uh, this woman, again, as I said before, she is literally a millennial, right? This is literally a millennial person. Um, but so is this, and so is this, and so is this, and uh, so is this. I am technically a millennial. I was born uh, after 1980, right? Um, so what do all these people have in common? Well, one of the few things that we can say about all of these people as a group is that millennials are the most diverse generation ever. 42% of them identify as non-white. 15% of them are first-generation immigrants. They weren't even born in this country. The population identifying as Hispanic has tripled, right? Um, so, like, you can't treat them as a monolith, right? Almost any statement made about millennials as a group other than how d diverse they are is going to be false in, uh, by virtue of how diverse they are, right? Um, like, the, the, all they are is young. That's all they all are all together, right? Um, uh, what else can we say about them? Well, they've been dealt a bad hand economically. They earn less uh, on average than their older peers before the recession and have 60% lower wage growth. But despite that, they're not letting that get them down. They're uh, the most educated generation to date, which unfortunately means more debt, of course. But despite that, 70% of them are already saving for retirement, which is pretty impressive, I think. But again, that's just broad demographic stuff. Uh, what you can really say about them, in my opinion, the thing that is most helpful to, to know about millennials, if you really want to appeal to them, is that they're people. All right? That's all you really need to know. So when people, so, so I was asked, you know, okay, your show is very popular among millennials. 
How'd you do that? What tips could you give? Well, to create a show that was popular with millennials, I didn't set out to do that. I just set out to create a show that I wanted to watch, right? And I banked on the fact that what I wanted to see was going to appeal to the same things that are universal about millennials, right? That they're, I, I tried to appeal to their curiosity, to their, uh, uh, to their intelligence. Um, I tried to treat them like intelligent people who are worthy of respect, who are going to embark on an intellectual adventure with us, right? And as a result, we created a show that doesn't just appeal to millennials, it also appeals to dads and moms and even some talks. Um, so it, we can like drop the pandering, right? And like all of the uh, reductivism and the generalizations, if we just like, you know, treat them with respect, uh, we'll do pretty good. And you'll probably earn a whole lot more. Oh yeah, you could ask, oh, I messed up my slides. Ask yourself what would reach me, right? That's, if you want to appeal to millennials, ask yourself what would reach me. It'll probably appeal to them too. And if you do that, now here's the final slide. You probably earn a lot more money bag emojis. Um, thank you guys so much. My name's Adam Conover. You guys have been wonderful. Wonderful.